That was Gen X Cops from Vampire Weekend. Their new album, Only God Was Above Us, will be out on the 5th of April and Ezra from the band joins us right now. It's a great record, as it as, as I knew it would be. Oh, uh, thank <laughs> it's, you. It's been a bit of a wait. Is it five years in the making? Yeah, this, this one was five years, but five years really flies by. That includes COVID years. I don't True. know if, if we have to put an asterisk on it. Yeah, but uh, well, con- congratulations anyway on the record. So we're on a road trip. This is the idea that we go yes. on a road trip. I would like to to start off with, I want to hijack your road trip and introduce you to a song. I was listening because we have something in common. You're a radio show host. And That's I'm right. A radio show yes. host. Um, yours is called Time Crisis, uh-huh. which is great. Uh, tell me how Time Crisis came about. Well, it, it basically started because uh, the y- your former colleague Zane Lowe moved to LA and he said, we're starting something at Apple Music and artists are going to do radio shows. Would you want to do one? I said, yeah, all right. And then next thing you know, all these years later, apparently we're the second longest running show after Sir Elton. Which, Sir Elton, that which is fine. That which is absolutely fine. And yeah, and it's just become a fun thing to do with my friends every two weeks. Yeah, my, my son is such an avid listener to it, honestly. Really? Oh my God, yeah, I've heard so many of them just in the kitchen as I'm going around and about. Uh, but I was listening to one and it really struck me. You were talking about a particular record and I thought, good grief, I've got that record somewhere in my house. And mm. so I went up to the, the into the garage, I went up into the loft of the garage today and I went through all my vinyl and I managed to pull out this. So I'm going to play this in now, I have to go over here. Okay. Press the button. They do it down, I oh yeah, <laughs> the greatest. <laughs> Please. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know, I went to, this is Pulling Muscles from Michelle, which you dissect and you talk about a lot on Time Crisis. Yeah. And Squeeze were a big influence on Vampire Weekend. Oh, absolutely. I, I remember, I, I mean, I always liked Squeeze, but I remember being in college and listening to Up the Junction on repeat and thinking like, I'd like to have a band con- kind of like this. Well, but you've kind of done it. As soon as you said that, I was like, oh, I can see the influence now. And so that is my original vinyl that I wow. bought in 1980, blew up, whatever it was. Amazing. And I remember going to various different, uh, the final ever squeeze shows that they did and being so sad that they weren't going to play anymore. And then like three years later, they'd right. get back and, <laughs> and they still make music today. Um, but what was it about them that you particularly loved? I liked the, I liked that they had, a, you know, that kind of punky new wave energy, but there was also that, kind of classic songwriting thing and I think that was kind of like what early Vampire Weekend was supposed to be like there we were trying to you know do something high energy and youthful but there was always a slight like classic streak you know even I I still like really old music like traditional songwriting and I just there's just obviously there's such a great songwriting team and the the lyrics you know I think I, I felt like a inspiration from that Excellent. Right. We are going on this road trip. So to begin with, we have to decide how we're traveling. So what kind of vehicle? What do you want to ride in? Maybe a a Jeep Cherokee. A Jeep Cherokee? Okay. Yeah. Have you had one of those? Have you got one of those? Well, as we talk about this, I'm picturing the last time I did a long drive and I was in a rental and it was a Jeep Cherokee. So I didn't didn't choose it, but I felt destiny thrust it upon me. Okay. And, and And I enjoyed it. What color should we have? This one was black. Let's, let's keep it real. Okay, that's cool. Um, and we'll begin with the first record uh, that we'll listen to on the, the car stereo. Mm-hmm. So um, do you like a good quality stereo in the car? Do you care about the sound that comes out in the car? Or are you quite happy for anything? Sure. I like, I like a, a good quality, but I'm, I'm happy with whatever. And, you know, it, it, you never know. Sometimes, sometimes it's the real test is when you listen on a bad exactly. s- stereo. So the first song that we're going to listen to is Phyllis Dillon. Tell me about mm-hmm. this song. This is just one that's been on my mind lately. Um, well, and this is uh, her cover of Perfidia, which is a pretty old song, um, originally in Spanish. But, you know, people in the 50s and 60s covered it all the time. I remember hearing, like, surf instrumentals of it. But this, her version, it's just always been one of my go-to kind of, like, 60s Jamaican records. Uh, a, amazing voice. And I just always love this song. It's such a... It's kind of, it's sad, but sweet, and I I love the lyrics, and I just also love the title, Perfidia. It's great. Yeah. We'll play it, and then we'll talk more after this. Think about where we're going, and then we'll we'll find out after this. (laughs) Phyllis Dillon, and that is Perfidia, Um, and Ezra chose that, Ezra from Vampire Weekend. Um, So where are we going on the road trip? Where should we, where, where do you fancy taking us? Um, I think we're going to the the eastern edge of Lake Erie which is uh it's a drive that I've I've done uh, in the, in the last couple of years 
from、uh, New York City all the way out. And people forget that New York State is so unbelievably big. So to drive to Lake Erie from New York City takes almost seven hours. New York State is like,、Whoa. I don't know. I, I, Don't, don't quote me on this, but you know, it's, it's like as big as Belgium or something. Yeah. Maybe、lost. bigger. And there's something cool about like just heading west, and it kind of takes you all through upstate New York and farmland and cool old towns and、um, uh, Amish country. So every once in a while, you might be behind a, a, a buggy. Okay, yeah. So you, you really you see it all on this drive.、Okay. So you probably start quite quick. Well, no, then you'd be in traffic at the beginning. Yes. But, but then you kind of slow down, then you relax. Exactly. You Lake Erie.、Um, and Lake Erie, what, tell me about what's there when we get there. There's,、uh, there's a town that I, when, when we were mixing the album, that、uh, Ariel Rekshad, our producer, and I we would have breakfast every day at a, at a diner on the shores of this town called Dunkirk. Um, the other Dunkirk. Yeah, I was going to say, I've heard of that place. This、before. is my, this is our Dunkirk. Yours,、okay? And we just, we just had a great time. Just every morning before we'd go mix with Dave Fridman, who mixed the record,、um, just hanging out at this diner in, in Dunkirk. And, and the, the, the Great Lakes really are amazing. They're as big as oceans. They're such, it's incredible. When you look out, and you, you can't see the other side. You know, it's, you're, you're staring at the ocean, but you're inland. It's pretty cool. How beautiful. Do you go in the water? Do you go on the lake? Yeah, some people do. People uh, uh, take boats out and there's places no, you can you, swim. Do you go in? No. <laughs> no? I, 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 just, I just drink my coffee and look out at, <laughs> look out at the vast expanse. Okay, not a big wakeboarder? No, maybe, maybe one day. One day.、Okay. I, I do know how to swim. Okay, that's good. <laughs> that's, that's about it. <laughs> no, people either really, really love getting onto a lake and sort of doing all kinds of water sports, yeah, or people,、I'm, you like the view. I'm happy to look. Okay.、Yeah. Um, so with the record, you, you moved around a lot, didn't you? Recording、yes. in various different places.、Um, tell us about where you went to and why those particular places. Tokyo? Some of it was luck of the draw. You know, my, my wife had work in、um, Tokyo, so our family moved there for six months. And,、um, you know, it's not hard to convince.、Uh, People to come to Tokyo to work. With、so, that. Yeah. So Ariel came out. And then also, we really fond memories of recording not too far from here at a, a small studio in Maida Vale because we were living in London for a while. And、um, how come?、Uh, again, my wife was, was shooting,、uh, she's an actress. She was shooting a TV show called Silo.、Mm. Check it out.、Um, and Yeah, and, we, and we, we had a ball just like hanging out. And it was just so good for us to kind of, sh- we, you know, we've, we've worked for years together recording in, in the usual spots in LA. So to come out here, not only does it give us a chance to kind of focus and, and lose some of the distractions of being at home, it was also just like a cool, you know, being in different countries, a, a way to reflect and think about what do we really want to say and, you know, think about the past and history. And、uh, I found my mind coming back to New York a lot, which is, A kind of a theme of this record. And then, of course, you know, we always have to record in New York a bit.、Mm. Um, and the theme within the theme, so if the theme is New York, what, what, are, what else is reflected in this record? What, what does it say about you that's going on for you at the moment? Hmm. You and the world. Well, I think, you know, it, it, it's funny as, as I've started to talk to people about the record, some people naturally say, oh, this is a darker record or it's intense or bleak. But ultimately, I think it's very it's hopeful. And you know, the, the record, it kind of runs, it opens with a lot of these feelings of unease and,、um, and questions. But I think by the end, there's some type of answer, answers present or, or some sort of sense of acceptance. Or, you know, I think, you know, the nature of, of the world has changed, right? Everybody knows that. And when I look back on some of our、uh, music that we made when I was younger, you know, sometimes you wrestle with those questions and it's, 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 you're, you're looking for the, you know, an answer, like, when's it going to stop? Then you get a little bit older and you realize, oh, it never stops. And so that's definitely part of it, you know?、Um, and, uh, you know, there, there's lyrics on this as a, you know, with references to conflict and war and unease and dread and all the usual human experience. And、I've, as I played this record for people, people say, oh, is that about XYZ current conflict? And almost always the answer is no. I was like, no, that lyric came four years ago. We took our time. But again, That's the, it's the nature of the world. Yeah. The final track is called Hope on,、yes. on the record. So, yeah, something to, to cling on to. Yeah. And, and the instrumentation and just the sound, the production of, of the record, as you say, very jarring, very, really interesting noises and you know, the, the sounds that are coming out of the record. No, to- totally. And it's, it's fun. When we make a record, I mean, this is what every artist has to do, right? We, we've been doing this for a while now. You have to. 
I'm obsessed with telling some kind of coherent story, album to album. I think they're like chapters in a book. And yet, it's not worth making an album if there's no new ground, you know, to to get into. And, you know, one thing on this record, as much as we've always been in, classified as an indie or alternative band, you know, look at what, who people compared us to in the early days, our earliest references. Paul Simon, things like that. You know, we've ne- this, this is the first time I think we've made a, a record that maybe has significant amounts of distortion, you know, in our own way. So it's fun. I almost feel like this is our first alternative record. When I first listened to it, I listened to the, the two tracks that we were given. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I mean, I know I really love Vampire Weekend. I love Vampire Weekend, one of my favorite bands. I don't know how I feel about this record. And then I listened to it, and then I listened to it, and then I listened to it, and then I'm like, I get it. I completely get it. And I, I felt that more with this record than anything else that I've heard you do before. But I really get it now. Well, that's great. I mean, I, 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 I believe that there is a very strong link to everything that we've done. But yeah, that's that's kind of... Look, even when our, with our first album, you, it's always you always have to throw a few curveballs um, at people and, and that's what keeps it interesting for us and I think the greatest achievement is is to hear stories like that where hopefully people can look back after this album and the ones in the future and say there were huge leaps between these records and yet I see, mm. I, you know, I see the story and it's, I feel it. It's good to be challenged. I've just remembered Diane Young actually the first time mm. that I heard that I'm playing it on my radio show and everyone going, what? That's got some crazy sounds. <laughs> it's in got it. some crazy sounds. Um, okay, let's play another track on our road trip. And um, anybody, who would you like to take with us in the car? It can be fantasy, it could be, you know, people that you've always wanted to go on a road trip with. So some interesting people that you can cash up with or friends. You know, well, this might backfire, but I, I think it'd be interesting to, to talk to Bob Dylan. Why not? If it can be anybody, say Bob Dylan, and then and then I'll make like a few people I actually know, just in case that gets awkward. <laughs> then I'll bring um, Ariel, the aforementioned producer, and um, let's see, um, I'll bring CT and Bayo, people I really know well, you know. Okay, Bob Dylan is inspired. Have you ever met him? No, I've never met him. I came very close to him once because <laughs> at the Fuji Rock Festival in Japan about four years ago. Maybe five years ago, he was um, he was the headliner, but then and we were going to play second from the top, and then we and then we heard, you know, Bob wants to get out of here early. You guys want to play after him? We said, all right. Oh my god! And then and then they and they said, and you can watch him side stage. So that was pretty exciting. That's very good. Okay, next track is Nico and these days. Why this song? What what is it about this that you love? I mean, this is just one. You know, I, I come back to throughout life, and you know, it's funny like having a kid now. You, you sometimes think about what do I you know what do you, what do you want to play in the car that's something that you just know is good and and this one it's popped you know alongside the Beatles and Bob Marley and all the classic stuff this one comes up a lot and this is one that I think people of all ages in my experience instantly can find the the beauty of this song and I don't know this this remind this this struck me as like a road trip kind of song it's such a kind of picture I mean I'm again I'm picturing upstate New York watching the leaves change it's some of the greatest uh, you know leaves on earth in, in the uh, uh, fall and just again such a, a sad sweet song that's you know on a road trip you're kind of maybe the conversation has you just reflecting about life and you're in this kind of unusual you're, you're looking forward you're thinking differently and this uh, I don't know there's something the this, 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 this song just I always felt like captured the, the kind of tenderness of life Nico and these days. So we're on a road trip with Ezra from Vampire Weekend. Um, do, you, do you like snacks in the car? I mean, you mentioned you, you're a father now, so I presume yeah. you have a car full of snacks as well as really awkward car seats, which yes. are you know, a delight yeah. to learn how to use. You always have to have snacks. And actually, the last time I, I was on a road trip, I stopped um, at a 7-Eleven in upstate New York. And 7-Eleven sometimes have a bad reputation, like a lot of, you know, uh, it's a convenience store. Yeah. And, and so some people, you know think that the food there is not very good and yet I don't this one I got a taquito which is a kind of like fake Mexican or you know it's a real thing but their version's a bit uh, sus but it actually tasted great and I realized you know what maybe you've been to some bad 7-elevens where they they leave the food the hot dogs burning too much but you know what if you get it fresh at a 7-eleven where the people are dialed in and they care about what's happening 
that it really can taste great. Okay, so that will be the snacks in the car. Take the 7-Eleven taquitos. I, I bought you a present, I've just realised now. I bought you this, because wow. it's a... It's Snicker, not just one Snicker, it's Snickers a Snicker duo. duo, yeah, because I heard that you quite like a Snicker. No, and I, and I love this because the bigger the Snicker, the worse it tastes. The best are like the little squares. So yes. this is, if, I don't know if it's something about the ratio of surface area or something. This is a great idea. <laughs> it's a mammoth one. Hmm. Two, little, two little Snickers in a, in a big pack. Yeah, love you're it. absolutely right. You want the nub of Snicker. That's the yeah, best part of it. King it? size is nasty. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, and what were your, your childhood journeys like, your childhood holidays? What memories have you got of where you used to go and what the car trip was like? We, we definitely stayed stuck on the East Coast. I didn't, um, I didn't make it to California until I was in college. Yes, with my family, you know, growing up uh, where I grew up in northern New Jersey, which is, you know, a suburb of Manhattan, you tend to either go down the shore, the famous Jersey Shore, oh, which yeah, I, have a lot of of, I have a lot of fond memories of the Jersey Shore. You learn a lot about life down the Jersey Shore. <laughs> you see, see all sorts of crazy stuff. And then upstate, it's very peaceful um, and then sometimes we'd make it all the way out to Cape Cod. That was about as, as far as we went and get a real taste of that New England beachy thing. But yeah, I love, I love the East Coast. It's a beautiful part of the country. Is Cape Cod really, is it very cool? Is it spoiled now? I've got no idea. I always imagine it's quite, it's very beautiful and very it, well, cool. Cape Cod, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting piece of land because it's like this big arm stretching out uh, off Massachusetts. So you get all sorts of stuff um, there. There's some like really fancy parts like the Kennedys famously have this big compound where the, they would go in the summer. Um, there, there's all sorts of stuff out there. It's not as crazy as uh, okay. the Hamptons, right, for okay. instance. Right, not quite the Hamptons. Yeah. Okay. So who would have been driving when you went on your, your trips? Often my mom, like sometimes, because my dad would be like, he, he was like working, so he'd come like late Friday night. So yeah, a lot of my memories would be my, my mom driving and my sister and I in the car. Okay. And, and what would you do? Because obviously there were no phones that you could play on. There were no yeah. uh, iPads or anything like that. So did you, what did you, you and your sister used to do? That's a good question. What were we doing? Um, I can't imagine I was like reading a book at age eight or nine. Yeah, I kind of remember a lot of like tapes being played in the car. Maybe my mom be like listening to a book on tape or something like oh, that. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Or just listening like the radio. You know, like I have a lot of memories being in the car with my mom. There was a show, I have no idea if people in the UK would know this, but this was like a beloved uh, public radio show called Car Talk. You ever heard of Car no, Talk? No, no, I haven't. No, what was it? It was these two brothers. I think they were from Boston, and they they're really funny guys. And and it, I, I mean, it sounds so boring as I describe, but people would call and be like, with car trouble. But these guys were so funny. These two brothers, and they had these like like real strong accents. They'd be like, oh, okay, here's the thing you're gonna. Do. We listen to that for hours. <laughs> car Talk. Car Talk sounds good. Yeah. Um, when did you learn to drive? I don't know. Yeah, when did you get your permit and? New Jersey, uh, probably 16, something like that. Did you that. pass the first time? Yeah, I, pa oh. I, yeah, I passed the first time. Um, yeah, you know, the written test is very difficult. But yeah, I made, I made, I made it through. Okay, so what kind of a driver are you? Um, I'm, I like to take it safe. Sometimes people say, like, you can't believe how slow you're driving. But not, not, on, the, not on the highway, you know. Okay. I know how to, I know how to I'm, I'm not going slow on the highway. But I don't know, just like... Naturally, especially like in LA, curving around these annoying little streets where there's like cars parked on both sides, and I do, I do like to take it real slow. Okay, when quite, I can. <laughs> very nice, very safe and cautious. Yes, a bit of a granddad. Kind yeah. Of. yeah, yeah. Okay, so I feel safe with you in the car. <laughs> <laughs> um, and your first car? Do you remember having the first car? I I briefly inherited my my dad's very beat up Toyota All Track. Uh, and it was a stick shift, which was somewhat unusual in, in the U.S. at that moment. But I was glad because I learned how to drive s stick. That's but like a gear, what we call here in the U.K., I think. Oh. Shift stick, I think, yeah. Yeah, so well, not ma automatic. manual, manual, yes. you're right. Yeah. And so that's good. So, if, you know, in some horror movie situation, I'll, I'll, if I have to jump into a car, I'll be able to drive whatever <laughs> drive it is. <laughs> um, and, yeah, I, it was... it was on its last legs and it, it didn't last very long. But, um, yeah, that was my car. So we're driving along. We're going to Lake Erie. We've got Bob Dylan in the car. Yep. When we get to Lake Erie, what, what should we do when we get there? We're going to go to that Greek diner and eat uh, Greek omelets and drink some coffee and, and look at uh, Lake Erie. That sounds lovely. <laughs> Final track that we're going to play is Alice Coltrane. So tell me about mm. this song. Well, 
I've been I've always liked Alice Coltrane. My mom had one record, one of her like uh, 60s records with a kind of the the harp jazz era and um it's it's been amazing to see at least in my little world that she's been having a bit of a a moment going to a wider audience. I just noticed she's her music's been used more in TV and movies and which is such a great way for people to learn stuff and I um I was pretty familiar with those late 60s early 70s records but uh some of the stuff that I I didn't know very well was recordings she made in the 80s and 90s when she had was kind of like running as I understand it uh in a Hindu ashram in Southern California and it, you know if you listen to any of her music spirituality was obviously a huge part of her her life going back to the earliest recordings but what's cool in in these recordings a, a lot of which were uh put together for a compilation uh, that that uh, the label Luakabop did called uh, World Spirituality Classics Volume 1 or something like that <laughs> is these really interesting recordings where she's using synths and she's you know chanting traditional hindu chants om shanti you know and but she's creating this kind of she's bringing her own flavor of spirituality to these um ancient words plus mixing in the modern sounds of synths and they're really like remarkable recordings yeah i just felt like you know on a long drive you probably start getting into some of the big the big questions mm-hmm. so i was like you know what alice coltrane that could be right for this That's so unbelievably peaceful and mm. beautiful. And I'm, yeah, I'm feeling like I'm heading towards Lake Erie. I'd quite like to go to Lake Erie, so maybe I can uh, definitely sneak myself in the car as well, if that's okay. Please. You're, I'm just imagining Bob Dylan. It could, it could be such an awkward car journey, couldn't it? Because he, he could say nothing at all. Or maybe right. he'd be quite chatty. Be, yeah, you, ne- you, never, you never know. know. <laughs> and you know what? I think he's... I, I did meet Larry David once at, at a party and he, and he, and he had, uh, whatever, I don't even remember our exchange. Somebody, I, th- I know his daughter and she's like, oh dad, this is us. And he's like, hey, you know, whatever. And he kind of yeah. like walked away. And I think the same thing is true with Bob Dylan. Whether you talk to these people for an hour and get into it or you get a bit of a, eh, either way, you're getting, it's perfect. You, get you know the what I mean? Of yeah, them, exactly. The it doesn't yeah. matter what's, what's spoken. <laughs> we came and did California did the, the trip that you do all along the coast. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Um, yeah, at, at one point we did pull over and we nearly had a divorce. It, it got to that point because it was because you're quite close to the edge. I was driving, there was a lot of criticism coming my way, and it was just, it was very, very close. I've done those drives. Drive. You have? Yeah, Highway One <laughs> oh, is God. actually even just last year we were driving up to this town, Sea Ranch, that's way like northern California. And I, yeah, I don't find that drive peaceful at all um, because. Yeah, every it's, they're so windy, and you're staring at the, this like you know 300 foot drop at times. Yeah, I, I had something similar. I think last summer I was with the family. We were driving from Italy to Nice, and it was like unbelievable, like biblical rain. And you know you're going through all these like mountain tunnels, and you come out and it's down again. Um, but ultimately, it, w- it was a bonding experience. And it was a great chance to listen to music. And actually, you know what? Speaking of Bob Dylan, yeah, this I mean, this is classic kind of like, I guess, dad dad vibes. I'd always wanted to play my family his 17-minute song about the JFK assassination, Murder Most Foul. And you're not going to get people to sit still for 17 minutes that much. So this, this is, yeah, this is like about as dad as it gets for me. I was like, <laughs> you know, I'd, lo- I'd love if we could listen to... Bob Dylan's 17-minute JFK assassination song right now. And I was like, all right, what, 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 this is the time. Uh, what age are we talking? He's five. Okay. I don't know if he was paying, I don't know if he was paying attention. <laughs> and you but were hoping that he'd listen to a 17-minute Bob Dylan song? Yeah, I mean, he, 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 Does, took, he took it in. Yeah, he's got an appreciation for good music. Yeah, I well, yeah, mo- yeah, most of the time. But whatever, you know, it's like you're just staring out the window. Yeah, yeah maybe it was just background music for him, but... Uh, that anytime I have, I'm, I'm realizing I'm going to be somewhere for a while. That's like a song I go to. I was like, now's the time to listen to Murder Most Fell. <laughs> and what does your son listen to normally? What are the kids' songs that you listen to at the age of five? The kids' songs. I mean, yeah, let's see. At this point, he had. I mean, like anybody had a Baby Shark uh, moment God, yeah. a few years ago, and Coco Melon, which uh, not not to be a hater, that was just never my cup of tea. I'm glad that that. Um, Moments passed. I mean, I, this this is gonna sound like I'm trying to be like, oh, my my kid's cool, but truly, 
the song that he got the most obsessed with was Scenario by Tribe Called Quest. Oh, wow. And, the, you know, like you play music in the house sometimes, and it's, it's a bit random, like what they gravitate toward. Something about that song became his favorite song for a while. And, like, even sometimes I'd go pick him up from somebody else's house, and they,、uh, and the parent would be like, your, your son took me aside and said, Will you please play Scenario by Tribe Called Quest? And I was like, All right. <laughs> I mean, I love that song. But yeah, I, that was, of all the songs he's heard, that was the one he started requesting. Well, that's, that's a very <laughs> cool thing to do. <laughs> I saw, I think I saw.、Um, A conversation that I think your mother in law was having when she was interviewed, and it was about her daughter meeting you. And she said the loveliest thing that she'd met her person, she'd met the right person. I thought it was、oh, really? as, a, as a mother、oh. and having grown up children, I just thought, wow, that's such a wonderful thing for her to know that your relationship is great and she's happy that her daughter is with you. Oh, that's very sweet. Yeah, no, she was, she was an amazing person. Yeah. And in great taste in music. Yeah. Cool.、Um, Ezra, it's been lovely traveling with you. Thank you very much indeed. What do you want to play? We can,、uh, you know, as we get there, we can stick something else on, I think, because we've obviously just had Alice Coltrane. Can we play a 17 minute song about the JFK no, assassination? No, we cannot. Okay, all right. But we could play a Tribe Called Quest or we could play Squeeze. We can do either of those things, whichever you prefer.、Um, yeah, sure. O- always a good opportunity.、Um, well, yeah, like, yeah,、uh, let's, play, um, let's play Up the Junction because that's. That's just so classic. <laughs> right, we'll do that, Ezra. Thank you.、Um, can I just ask you about the summer, what it holds、uh, for you? Because I'm presuming there'll be festival dates. I think you've announced Primavera so far. Yes, we have Primavera. That's, that's as close as we'll get to the UK for a minute. But we're, we, we, we have a whole tour that we'll be announcing soon. Definitely coming back to the UK before the year is through. In the summer, we have yeah, some festivals in the US, a bunch of touring. Yeah, we'll be all over the place. Okay, so no UK festivals this summer? No UK festivals this summer. But some UK dates at、yes. some point. Okay, that, that'll keep me going.、Mm. Uh, and the album comes out in April and it's called Only God Was Above Us. Ezra, thank you for talking to us. Thank you.